Hey everybody! Well, today we're going to take a look at this brand new set from LEGO. This is the Emperor's Throne Room, set number 75352, and it has 807 pieces. So this is part of their diorama line that they've been doing lately. Um, I, I gotta say I love these dioramas, I really do. Except I do feel like they're overpriced. <laughs> they are a little bit on the expensive side. Uh, this one is retailing for $100, which is I don't know, probably the biggest drawback to it, but I mean, it looks really nice. The infamous scene with the Emperor, Darth Vader, and Luke Skywalker having their lightsaber battle in the Emperor's throne room. Um, the whole thing looks amazing. Here on the uh, back, you can kind of get another view of it. You can see the Emperor shooting out his uh, lightning bolts. <laughs> it's really cool. And uh, the way the window is done is really nice. So it, you can see a scene from the movie here, and then they kind of recreate it right there. And then there's just some dimensions. So, uh, yeah, I think this will be a fun build. I do love these a lot. Um, I think that these dioramas have been kind of a hit with them. Uh, I really love the trash compactor, even though I think that that was way too expensive as well. Uh, better, I like this one and the trash compactor better than the, um, the uh, what was it, the trench run. Um, I, for some reason, I didn't really like that as much once I got it built. But this one here, I think, is really cool. And plus, you get Luke. Darth Vader and the Emperor, and I think Luke has got a brand new hairpiece as well. Starting with the minifigures now, we've got the Emperor and Darth Vader, and I always love these two. I always think that they're great figures that Lego makes. I love the Emperor's evil look, and he's got a, uh, another face expression as well. The uh, lightning bolts are always great when it comes to the Emperor. This Darth Vader, I think we've had this before, but I do like that he has the arm printing, which they don't always include with all the Darth Vader figures, but this one does, which makes sense. It's, this is kind of a special set. They do both have the soft capes, which I like also. They don't get uh, bent, when, uh, especially when the Emperor is sitting in his chair over the course of time, if they sit there for a long time. But these figures are fantastic, so let's take a look at their faces. So I just flipped the Emperor's hood around so we can see the other facial expression. This one's not as evil, but he does have that mean look. <laughs> it's really cool looking. And then of course Darth Vader, I've always loved the fact that they make him look the way they do. And on the back of his head he's got the, uh, the wounds back there. So yeah, that's very cool. But yeah, I love these figures. I think they're great. Here's Luke, and he's got his brand new hairpiece, which is very cool. Looks more like his hair did in the Return of the Jedi. I think this is probably the main reason that most people probably want this set is just to get that hair piece to have the the new Luke Skywalker look. <laughs> I do love that they do make his hand with the, the black glove that he has for the right hand that he had cut off and then of course the regular one there. The torso print I think is the same that we've had before but I do like it with the belt and that little flap that he had on the front. But another great figure and I think it's fantastic. And here's a look at the alternate face, which is not as serious looking. In fact, he almost looks like he's kind of smiling right there. So another great alternate face. And here's the set all put together now. And I just love this set. I think it looks so cool. I'm pretty impressed with it. I mean, I did see pictures of it and everything, but seeing it in person and having the experience of building it gives you more of an appreciation for it. But, um, you know, this kind of takes the place of the uh, final dual set that came out a while back. Uh, I ended up taking that apart as soon as I found out that they were releasing this because the main focal point of that set was the throne room that we see here. I mean, granted, that one did have some uh, play features, but it took up a lot of room. This is more compact, it's more detailed, and it just looks, you know, awesome. I think they really did a good job on this. I love this, uh, the whole just look of it and that whole... Uh, back section right there looks awesome. I love the way they did it. And then back here, this was a crazy thing going on back here. I'll get some close-ups of it and kind of talk about that a little bit because that was really interesting how they decided to approach the shape of that window. But it, it's really well done and I think it's fantastic. All right, well, let's get some close-ups of it. Starting with these tiles in the front now, these are not stickers, thank goodness. They're actual prints. So we got the Star Wars logo. And then we have the Luke Skywalker quote, I'm a Jedi like my father before me, which is really neat. I'm glad they put that on there. We also have the 40th Return of the Jedi tile. Um, this also came with the Super Star Destroyer, the MIDI scale one that I did a video on. But they, I don't know if these come with all of the sets that came out on um, May 1st. I, I, it probably is on the Endor speeder bike chase. I didn't get that um, diorama. I didn't think it looked that great. 
not as good as this one. I, I can tell that this was the most popular one because it definitely sold out. I think they still had the other one left in the stores, but here we can see that cool little control panel thing. Now those things have little um, tile, or they're like hinges, and you can just kind of adjust these the way you want them. So you're going to have to kind of mess with those to kind of get them to look even. Got this nice railing going on here, the way that was done. And then all, you know, you're going to have to also make those kind of even too. You know, it's a little bit of fiddling with some of this stuff to make it look, you know, make it look right. Um, we also have a couple of jumpers right there so that these two can stand on the lower level if they want to. So it's the same thing going on over here. I really like these. Uh, the whole base is really nice. It's just kind of elegant looking. And you got the uh, those little grill pieces. Here you can see what the underside of that looks like. These steps are really nice. And then this back here, this is the part that was really crazy to put together. And kind of ingenious, but it was weird. I mean, it's I've never seen this done before, but they used all these window pieces, and there is glass pieces that you put in there. But they're attached by a clip, and you can see there that there's a flexi tube. So there's a flexi tube on the inner part of it, and then there's also a flexi tube on the outer part. See it right in there? And those there's more clips where those go in there. So when you're putting this together, you have to be um, aware of the spacing of these. You, know, you have to make sure they're spaced out properly. And you're going to have to kind of fiddle with it and, and try to you know, get them so that they look even. But I think that is a clever use of that piece, and it looks really cool. This window piece is really nice. That is a, a printed thing. It, it is not a sticker, thank goodness. But uh, one thing I didn't like is that it, di it just, uh, you know, it didn't have its own little package. Something like this, they usually put in its own little wrapper to keep it from getting scratched, and that did not have that. So I'm sure there's going to be some people that end up with a scratched window piece right there. But, uh, yeah, I kind of wish they would have I mean, thankfully, I don't have scratches on mine, but that's going to be a problem for some people. Also, that fits down in these little clips right here. It rests in there, and then these little things up here kind of hold it in place. That one, and there's one right there. So it's kind of neat the way they figured out how to hold that in there. It just kind of rests in there. Here's the side of this. And they even kind of made this look kind of nice. You know, they could have made that look sloppy, but they didn't. They went ahead and finished it off with this nice tiling. Here's how thick it is. This whole front section is kind of like a facade that you build. It's on hinges and it just kind of curves around here. And then it's a sideways construction studs and you just kind of place it on there. That's like some studs here, here, and here. And it just goes in there and it also kind of tucks down inside there. See how it goes in behind the, the main platform there? So it's pretty cool the way they did it. I don't know. I was very impressed with this. I don't, I mean, it's not like an, un, you know, like an, an un, inordinary, uh, set or build but i just uh, there were certain aspects of it that i kind of just thought was neat and and fun to build and it was just one of those ones where you can relax and just enjoy it but i really like the emperor's chair it looks just like it i mean that's one of the last things you build and you can turn it it, it is on a swivel and here's what the back of it looks like and he's got kind of like this uh purplish color in the back see the back uh the back in there like the uh, cushions and on the seat there's also some purple tiling on there but it looks very cool so yeah i love this thing and there's also another hidden little spot so on the bottom here there's a neat little compartment and this is where they hide the emperor's lightning bolts you can see them down in there there's a couple of blue clips that hold those in and that's where you can put them so that if you don't want to use the uh, lightning bolts or have the emperor holding it you can stash them in there. Um, I it's kind of an inconvenient to kind of get under there to get them, though. I suppose if you want, you can pull this part of the floor out because it's they're just right under there. But it's not the most convenient thing. I well, let me see. Can I push it up? Uh, you can kind of push it up. There we go. So I guess you can push it up from the bottom, and then there you got some access for it. Maybe that's what it was intended to do. Maybe if they made these jumpers and not these two by two pieces, it would have been a little bit easier to get in there. But, you know, hey, it's fine. It, I mean, that's easily replaced back on there. But, yeah, it's a clever way of hiding those. As I mentioned, this set retails for $100, which is, oh, man, that's a lot of money for this. Um, I mean, it's cool looking. It's really nice. But I kind of think that LEGO does price these dioramas pretty high. Uh, I, I mean, they can always use the excuse that it comes with the minifigures, but the trash compactor set had four uh, minifigures with that one, I believe. 
And, or no, it had six because it had three PO and R2 as well, and that was only $80. I don't know if it had less pieces than this, and plus that had a play feature where it could, uh, you know, the uh, trash compactor could compact. I wish this had maybe some kind of play feature on it. I don't really know what they could do. Uh, maybe just making, maybe you have a dial over here that you can turn and, and these guys will turn and it looks like they're, you know, doing their lightsaber duel, but uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it's mainly just as a model kit, but a uh, hundred bucks, I think is what's going to shy most people away from a set like this, although it did sell out. So <laughs> I guess people are paying that price. I mean, I did, but I, I do it because I, I want to do a video on it and do a review on these sets. But I would say if you want this set um, and you're not in a hurry to get it, definitely wait till it goes on sale because it's bound to go on sale. Um, you know, all the sets seem like they go on sale, but uh, it is a cool set. I really like it. It's probably one of the better dioramas. My favorite is the trash compactor. I really like that one. But this one here is a close second. I think it looks really good. But anyway, if you want one of these, um, hopefully uh, LEGO will get them back in stock. It seems like they didn't get very much stock on a lot of these May the 4th sets or May the 1st sets. <laughs> May 1st sets. They came out on May 1st for VIPs, but they were available on May 4th. And they had a lot of um, extra goodies that you could get too, but I didn't get any of those because I ended up buying this off of Amazon because I didn't want to wait in line at the Lego store. <laughs> I, just didn't, I just didn't have it in me to go stand at that Lego store line because I knew it was going to be a disaster that day. But it's a really cool set if you're willing to pay 100 bucks for it. If not, just wait for it to go on sale. But other than that, I really like it. I think it's really cool. All right, well, that's it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'd very much appreciate it. And until the next video, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. So have a good one.